After moving into my new home, I realized I needed more storage in my garage. Right now there's no space for my tools, so they sit in this pile and block our cars from parking. To solve this storage problem, I decided to build my own French cleat shelves, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The first step is to clear out a working space. With that done, I now need to take the measurements for the shelves. After measuring, I determined the best fit would be these half inch 4x8 birch plywood sheets. You can also use 3 quarter inch sheets, but these half inch are a little bit easier to work with. Before I install the first sheet of plywood, I need to cut out the hole for this plug. I measured the outlet correctly, but I couldn't get the plywood to sit level. And that's because we found that the plywood was sitting on the cable to the sprinkler control box. We marked it out and made a cut, and the plywood was able to sit perfectly level. I was then able to mount the panel to the studs in the wall using 2.5 inch wood screws. To place the screws, I used a carpenter square and made a mark 2 inches from the edge. I then used a countersink bit like this so the nails would sit flush. I placed an additional row of screws 24 inches down and another row 2 inches from the bottom. All of these screws really secured the sheet to the wall. I then marked out the second plywood sheet before I hung it up. With those on, I ran another row of screws down the middle to make sure it was more secure. While I was working on the wall, I decided that I was going to exchange out this outlet for one that was more dust resistant. These tamper resistant outlets have a thin cover so not as much dust will get inside. I've hung up the wood panels and exchanged the plug, so the next step is to cut out the French cleats. To do that, I'm going to cut these sheets into 4 inch strips. When you're making your cuts, make sure you have clamps or counterweights to hold down the plywood. The final piece is too narrow for a handsaw, so I'm going to use my table saw. Once you're done, you're going to have a big pile of these 4 inch strips. With that done, I'm now going to make a 45 degree mitered cut on all the wood. I want the cut to be as close to 45 degrees as possible, so I'm going to use this digital square and adjust as needed. With the right angle, I now need to adjust my fence so that the cut goes straight down the middle of the boards. I also need to make sure to take into account the width of the saw blade, which is about an eighth of an inch. With those cut and looking at all my tools, I decided I needed another panel. With the panels up and everything cut, I was now ready to hang up the French cleats. As I hang up the cleats, I'm not going to start on the bottom because none of the tools will fit there. So instead, I'm going to start about 18 inches up. It's extremely important to make sure this first one is perfectly level. This is because all the other cleats are going to be measured from it. With the first cleat up, you can see how it works. The 45 degree cut faces away from the wall, which then allows the other half to wedge inside and holds it very firmly. I'm now ready to put up the other cleats, and to do that, I cut out these spacers. The cleats sit on top and will be spaced perfectly every time. All I do now is repeat the same process many, many times.
looks good, so now I need to cut the cleats for the smaller section. Just like last time, I'm going to start 18 inches from the bottom. While I was hanging these up, I thought to myself, what could make this garage better? And the answer is more cleats. So I decided to add another sheet of French cleats on the opposite side of the wall. This time will be a little different because I need to cut around the hanging shelves and also the electric conduit that I installed earlier. I made the measurements with a carpenter square, then cut it out with a jigsaw. When I hung it up, it made a very clean fit. I secured it to the wall, then hung up the rest of the cleats. With that done, the fun part begins because now I'm going to build the holders for the tools. I rolled out this new workbench that I had just built, which plans and video will be linked below by the way and then laid out some of my tools so I could start getting an idea of how to build the holders. After making some drawings, the first thing I decided to build would be a holder for my sander. I'm gonna speed things up so you can watch how I did it. I have the base for the sander, so now I'm putting on the French cleat. Make sure to put on the holder so it faces away from the mount. Make sure to wipe off excess glue so you don't hang it on the wall and it gets stuck. Also be careful because these angled cuts can be very sharp. You'll want to grab a round edge like a screwdriver and rub it on the end so it slightly blunts it. If it's too sharp, it can lodge dirt on the cleats on the wall. This piece is a support bracket to give it more support as it hangs on the wall. After I built the holder for the sander, I decided to add a small shelf underneath. Everything looks ready, so now it's time to test out my work. The sander holder fits perfectly on the wall, and the extra shelf is perfect for storing sander equipment. These French cleats are very strong, especially with that support bracket behind it. The best part about a French cleat is I can move my tools anywhere I want. Next up, I decided I needed to build something to hold all these batteries. Now I have a good storage place for my batteries. Next up, I'm gonna build a holder for these sealants and glue.
Now I have a place to store all my sealant and it's extremely easy to access. With these three holders done, I'm gonna end the French cleat video here and I'll have a part two to show some additional builds. This has been one of my favorite projects and I hope it gave you the confidence to go try something like this yourself. Check out my other videos for more home improvement tips. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.